Hello and welcome to our group's video on Green's function technique in heat transfer. Our group members are Abhishek Kumar, Harshit Agrawal, Harshit Saini, Harshit, Harshita Garg, Pritam Paul Sankari and Swastit Sharma. So today we are going to see why should we use the Green's function at all. What the Green's function is, its properties and what are its various applications in heat transfer. The Green's function is a powerful tool of mathematics and is used in solving some linear non-homogeneous partial differential equations and ordinary differential equations. So Green's functions are derived by the speciality, specially developed method of separation of variables which uses the properties of Dirac's function. This method was considerably more efficient than the other well-known classical methods. The series solution of differential equations yields an infinite series which often converges slowly. Thus it is difficult to obtain an insight into the overall behavior of the solution. The Green's function approach would allow us to have an integral representation of the solution instead of an infinite series. To obtain the field file due caused by the distribution source, we calculate the effect of each elementary portion of source and add that is integral them all. If G R comma R naught is the field at the observer's point R caused by a caused by a unit source at the source point R naught, then the field at R caused by distribution F of R naught is the integral of F of R naught G of R comma R naught over the whole range of R naught occupied by the course. The function G is called the Green's function. So consider the following linear equation that we need to solve l of u of x equal to f of x a green's function g of x of s of a linear differential operator l is equal to lx acting on distributions over a subset of the euclidean space at a point s is any solution of l of g of x comma x prime is equal to delta of x minus x prime where delta is the direct delta function this property of a green's function can be exploited to solve differential equations of the form l of u of x equal to f of x so here we see that f of x is equal to integral of del of x minus x prime into f of x prime into dx prime that in turn would be equal to integral of l of g of x comma x prime into f of x prime into d of x prime so l u of x equal to integral of l of g of x comma x prime into f of x prime into d x prime as l operates only on x this gives us u of x which would be equal to integral of g of x comma x prime into f of x prime into dx prime so u can be obtained by solving this integral and so pde of the form l of u of x equal to f of x with a boundary condition as d of u of x equal to 0 where d is also some differential operator the solution is given by u of x is integral of g of x comma x prime into f of x prime into dx prime where g of x comma s is a green's function satisfying the following conditions g of x comma s is a con is continuous in x and s for x not equal to s l of g of x comma s is 0 for s not equal to 0 d of g of x comma s is 0 and the Green's function is symmetric that is g of x comma s equal to g of s comma x. Let us take an example of the Green's function solution to the transient heat transfer through the building wall. Assume the 1D heat transfer perpendicular to the wall surface as wall is extending infinitely along its lateral directions but has thickness L along the direction of heat transfer. Assuming no heat source inside the wall and heat flux is known at the inner and outer surfaces as F0 and FL of T. 
we can see the following conditions del t by del tau is equal to alpha del square t by del x square where t small t is the temperature and tau is the time for, uh, and this condition is for x ranging from 0 to l and tau greater than 0 t is 0 for x ranging from 0 to l for tau equal to 0 minus del t by del x equal to f naught of tau for x equal to 0 for all tau greater than 0 and lambda del t by del x equal to f l of tau for x equal to l for all tau greater than 0. Now we will establish the Green's function and we can see that del g by del t is alpha into del square g by del x square for all x ranging from 0 to l and tau greater than 0. g is 0 for x ranging from 0 to l for tau is 0. del g by del x is 0 for x equal to 0 for all tau greater than 0 and del g by del x is also 0 for x equal to l for all tau greater than 0. In the above equations, lambda and l are the thermal conductivity coefficient and the thickness of the wall and A is the thermal diffusivity. Applying the method of separation of variables, coefficients of the solution can be calculated from initial conditions of the equation. Then Green's function of the pro problem can be obtained using Fourier expansion method. G x comma t x comma tau and is equal to 1 by L plus 2 by L summation of 1 to infinity exponent of minus m square n square into a into tau minus tau prime by l square into cos m pi x prime by l into cos m pi into x by l. The effect of boundary he heat flux f naught t and f l t can be regarded as the effects of a sort of instant inner heat sources along with time at outer and inner surfaces. Here the Dirac delta function uh, in the first equation represents that the heat source is at x equal to 0 and in the second function represents that the heat source is at x equal to L. Using these expressions for calculating the temperature distribution due to the two sources available inner and outer heat fluxes, we get the integrals x explained in the earlier part of the video. T of x comma tau is equal to 1 by rho Cp into integral of 0 to t f not in f not of tau prime into g of x comma tau for x prime equal to 0 comma tau prime into d tau prime plus 1 by rho cp into integral of 0 to tau f l of t prime into g x comma tau or x equal to l in comma tau, tau prime into d tau prime. Now putting these expressions for g, we have found using Fourier series and using approximations like alpha is lambda by Cp which is almost equal to 8 into 10 to the power minus 7 meter square per second. You can see that we have used these approximations. Now for this integration, we have integral of 0 to tau e to the power minus 2 into 10 to the power minus 3 into m square into tau minus tau prime d tau prime is uh, 1. So you here you can see t, uh, tau naught is ln of 20 by 2 into 10 to the power minus 3 meter square. We have dis defined this tau naught to be used in our equation. So here you can see the following results. The maximum of T0 is 25 minutes above. However, it is a relatively slow heat transfer process in an actual building and the boundary heat flux can be regarded as a constant during the 25 minutes. After further simplifications and approximations and using boundary conditions, we get the following temperature at the surfaces. So this is how the Green's function can be used to analytically solve the heat equation. In the example inspired from the paper, a Green's function solution to the transient heat transfer through the building wall written by 
Zhong Wei Zhu, Hong Ming Fan, Jing Hua, and Chang Zhang, the authors have analyzed the results obtained using MATLAB. For usage of real circumstance, we should justify our assumption that the heat flux will not vary significantly within a short amount of time. So verification was performed in three conditions as winter, transition season and summer. Testing the heat flux variation in the inner and outer surface of the envelope. Boundary conditions were given as the third kind boundary condition. Outdoor temperature was set at the air temperature of winter, spring and summer in Beijing. Convective heat, tra heat transfer co coefficient was set as 8.7 Watt per meter square Celsius for inner surface and 23 Watts per meter square, meter square Celsius for outer surface. Thermal conductivity, density and specific heat capacity were set as 2 Watt per meter Kelvin, 2500 kilogram per meter cube and 1000 Joule per kilogram Kelvin respectively. Heat flux calculation was performed on a kind of commercial software SC stream using the finite volume method. So if we have a look at uh, the temperatures recorded uh, by the uh, authors of the paper, so they have measured, uh, measured the indoor and outdoor temperatures in winters and here is the graph of uh, their measurements. So as we see the temperature was varying um, outdoors while the temperature was kept constant indoors. Similarly graph was plotted even for uh, the uh, heat flux which was observed uh, at observed at um, through the wall. So here uh, here the bottom we f see the maximum change and the minimum change and this shows that the change in the flux is quite less. Similarly the graph has been plotted for uh, the outdoor heat flux and it's changed in 25 minutes and here we see the the red graph it indicates the change in the flux and it's almost close to zero and similar analysis has been done even for the transition transition uh, season and uh, the graph shows the relevant measurements of outdoor and indoor temperatures and similarly for the flux and here uh, the red one as I told before this it, it shows the heat flux change in the 25 minutes and the maximum change observed is 0 0.08 which is quite less and hence we can consider heat flux to be constant for the first 25 minutes and similar in the case of outdoor heat flux on the like uh, which is the heat flux entering uh, from the out outer surface of the wall so th we have we took inspiration from the paper a greens function solution to the transient heat transferred uh, through the building wall uh, written by uh, Chinese researchers Zhong Wei Zhu, Hon Ming Fang, Xing Hua and Cheng Zhang. So they have conducted these experiments and have collected data in Beijing. So all the temperatures were relevant to uh, the measurements done in the city of Beijing. So we have used Comsol Multiphysics to replicate the results of the authors. So the authors have uh, mentioned specific uh, thermal conductivity of the material that they have used uh, for, the, for the wall. So we have tried to reproduce the same simulation study on Comsol Multiphysics. So I have created a wall in that and uh, given a thickness as mentioned by the authors of the paper. And also we mentioned the flux in, in inflow and the outgoing flux on both the surfaces of the wall. So now, so here are the results which we have got. This slide shows the plot, the isothermal contour plot that we have plotted. Um, and the other one, this one, it shows the surface temperature plot that we have plotted. So this shows the temperature distribution uh, along the cross section of the wall. So along the thickness of the wall. So this is, these are the results which we have obtained from the console. Thank you and have a nice day.